Hi, this is Michael from Machination Studio. I know it's been a while since I've uh, made a video. So late last year, November, December, I launched a Kickstarter for uh, my Schnauzer walking tank toy together with uh, uh, Mighty Jacks. Um, I had to cancel that campaign because uh, it didn't quite work out. One of the main reasons was that uh, we had a plan to use injection molding to make the model. And that kind of uh, meant that I need a big audience and the price would be pretty high. And I, I don't think I, I quite have that audience quite yet. Um, and injection molding has always been a, a big barrier for, for small makers and small brand owners like myself. Um, one of the benefits of, of, of that entire journey was that I got to visit DesignerCon in Pasadena and, and also San Francisco where I met some wonderful people. And that got me really kind of reassessing what you know, Coding Colossus was, was really all about. Uh, when I started all of this, I came up with a term for what I'm doing. Which is, it was pretty hard to describe what I'm doing to people. And, and, and the term was mechanized diesel punk walking tank scale model. It's a bit of a mouthful, and, and, but I think it, it most accurately describes what I'm doing. Um, right, so right now I'm kind of having a thought of uh, you know, what the startup world would call a pivot. And, and I'm not going to abandon any of these things, but uh, I, think, I think I have to shift the weightage of, uh, of each of these attributes. And, and I think I'm going to lean a little bit more on the scale model side of things, because I think a lot of the... Uh, People who are buying my models are, are actually buying the kits and, 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 and they really like building them and, and, and painting them themselves. So I'm, I'm going towards a kind of a garage kit, resin kit, um, scale model direction with uh, moving ahead with uh, Coding Colossus. I will still have mechanisms because I, I, I think you know, having LED lights, having uh, uh, rotating the moving guns is, is, is such a delight for people. But uh, I may have to, especially on the smaller models, uh, give up on the walking mechanisms because the walking is a bit of a challenge because uh, it, it means that I have to have pretty tough plastics and, and that either means really expensive materials or really expensive processes and I'm, I don't think I'm quite there yet so I, I may have to, for the moment, you know, have to give up on the walking mechanisms. But I will still make them articulate, you know, that they can be posed, and, and, and I, I, I still believe in that. Which kind of leads us to uh, why I'm in my pantry area here in the studio. Because I need to show you my new coffee machine. So this is, uh, it's not a coffee machine. It's the Piopoli Moai printer. So Piopoli is the company that makes it. And Moai, you know, the, that statue in the Easter Island uh, is, the, is the model name of this machine. So this is a stereolithography 3D printer. This is, I hate to use jargony terms, but this is potentially a real big game changer for uh, small creators like myself because, you know, in the past I've had to send these out for prints. Um, to big companies and, 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 and I've spent thousands of dollars printing the parts that went into the Mount Cyclops and, and, and into the uh, Schnauzer prototypes. Right now, a machine like this is costing me less than $2,000 and I can have it in the studio. It's a real big deal because uh, when I used to have to send this out for prints, they would come back in two weeks, four weeks. and But now with something like this, I could send something to print, and within, within a matter of hours, I can say, hey, this doesn't quite fit. You know, I'm gonna tweak the, the sizes a little bit and print another one and, and, and give that a go. So, so the iteration process is gonna be much better, and it also allows me to get much higher degree of, um, of detail, you know, which, which goes back to, to part of uh, why I am kind of um, rethinking about the walking mechanism, because not having to walk, not having to go through the stress and, and the, uh, the risk of, of all the moving parts means that I can, I can add in a lot more details to, to my designs. 
and, and having this around really is um, speeding up my process. So, so my direction that I'm going now with is with um, smaller models, hopefully lower price, um, less of a walking mechanism and more details and, 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 and um, definitely I, I think I, I have also be focusing on on selling kits rather than uh, completed models. So let's let's uh, show you around this thing, shall we? The way it works is that there is a build platform, this aluminium block here, and there is a, a vat of liquid resin. You can see this little grey resin here. Underneath is a, a laser that uh, cures the resin depending on uh, my 3D model file. And as this thing prints, the uh, build platform moves upwards. So, so the difference between this and other forms of 3D printing is that this is actually upside down and, and, and influ influences the uh, way the supports are done and um, because the, the build platform starts being pressed right against the resin and it slowly goes up. And, and, but I think I've got this uh, kind of dialed down. This is probably the biggest model I've printed so far and it, from what I can see is it, it, it turned out Perfectly. So the resin is activated by ultraviolet rays in a in a specific uh, specific spectrum, and um, I built a curing machine because um, after this process I got to take this out, clean it up, and um, and the cure it. So I built a little curing DIY curing machine, which I'm going to show you right now. So this is actually a um, DIY UV curing machine because. Uh, the, the big companies will sell something like this for like 500 bucks, but I'm, I've, I've actually built this for, I suppose, like tens of dollars, probably less than 50 bucks. So what's inside is a, a reel of um, UV LED bulbs, which I got for like tens of dollars. And it's connected to a power supply, which my friend really nicely provided. And really that's it. And a biscuit tin, which, um, I will place over the um, the models and uh, another thing I needed was a little bit of a egg timer. I can get really fine details, I mean just just take a look at this, this is a uh, browning machine gun and, and, and the human figure, I can get really fine details from this and I'm, I'm really happy and I think this is something that you guys can get excited about um, in the future very near future hopefully so yeah so this is these comes in parts and they will have articulation so this is this is what is being planned right now I have also you know in the process of learning how to operate this machine uh, made a few short videos which I'm, I'm going to show you here right now so I thought I'll do a real quick video because I, I did these as uh, symmetrical halves and I'm, I want to show you guys how well they kind of fit together and well, they don't quite, right? I think I think a big part of that is just my inexperience with SLA and supporting, you know, supports for the prints. Uh, so there's pretty big gaps and stuff like that. Um, definitely, I can attribute quite a bit of that to user error, my errors. Um, but having said that, it's still a bit of a risk. I think symmetrical halves that you're gonna kind of glue look together like that is a bit iffy. So in the future, if I can help it, I'll do this as uh, one piece. Uh, likewise, I've done this you know previously in one piece, and now I'm trying to do it with uh, two pieces. It's more or less okay. It's just um, you know I think I think this can be fixed. Yeah, while I'm washing this, I'll just uh, was just checking this out, and it. it it turns out to be really good. I'm, I'm very happy with uh, this solution compared to what I was doing previously. So one problem that I see here is that these two corners here are lifting up. So I, I think, again, now lesson learned that I probably need to support the corners a little bit more. I think I put the support right in the middle here. I think there's not enough. So if you have any ideas how to prevent this sort of, uh, you know, sh I guess it's a shrinkage issue, it's a, it's a lifting issue. But other, you know, I'm not too worried about this because in the end model, this is actually all covered up. So, so that's pretty much invisible, but um, it, 
it's nice to learn another trick. But this is turning out so much nicer. It's so much cleaner. The circles are perfectly circular and I don't have to worry about um, matching up places that is visible. This is, oh, I should have thought of this earlier. So what I do with my the base of uh, the supports is that uh, I make them two millimeters thick, but I also give them like a 75 degree angle. So this is like a default in the B9 creator that you can do. So once I have that, I can actually just slip my Slip my um, flat heads in there. I mean, uh, the flat sided uh, cutters in there, and it and it just comes off without having to damage the uh, the aluminium plate. So even even a large piece like this can be um, you know can come off fairly reasonably easily. Of course, uh, I probably should have taken off the smaller pieces uh, first to give myself more room. Just want to really quickly show you this. My little Tupperware of um, IPA inside my um, UV curing thing, and uh, so this is how it turns out. So the uh, apparently some of the resin gets. Um, Gunked up. I'm trying to see if I can filter it and you know recycle the IPA. Whoa, whoa. So I'm going both to a little sieve like this and uh, and this coffee filter. Hopefully it works. Yeah, it's kind of just going through. So hopefully I can uh, save on a little bit of IPA. So um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little bit of an update and and, uh, and enjoyed looking and you know checking out my new toy and the new toys that I'll be able to make with it. And um, you know I, I hope you guys stay engaged with with, with the developments of, of the new model size. One of my hopes is I'm, I hope to make, be able to maybe release even three kits this year. You know, uh, one of the benefits of having smaller kits is that I can do more of them. And um, a big part of that is, 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 is you guys you know, being interested in what I'm doing. And, and, and for, for the guys who are, are uh, watching the YouTube video to help me bump me over the 4,000 hours, over 12 months, uh, kind of a new limit thank you very much for for doing that and um well i hope to be able to show you my updates uh, very soon i'm I, i'm planning to go to center probably end of jan uh, end of jan probably beginning of february and um from there i'll i'll i'll, I'll give, you, give you guys another update thank you thank you for watching